Chapter 14 completes Paul's discussion that he began in chapter 12, uh, went through chapter 13, and now comes out into chapter 14 on tongues and prophecy. I want you to note the distinction between uh, the spiritual gifts that were given in chapter 12 and then in chapter 14. And structurally, Paul places them either side of chapter 13. This is a very deliberate literary device that Paul has used because he wants to center all of the gifts of God, everything that are listed in chapter 12, and then everything after that, tongues and prophecy in chapter 14, centering and emanating out of chapter 13, the the whole gospel idea of the love of God, the God who gives these gifts in love to us. So in other words, love rules the roost, or at least Paul is trying to show the Corinthians that love should rule the roost. Chapter 14, as I've just said, is about prophecy and tongues. Now Corinth, because of their love of speech and and language and, and debate and good speakers, They were clamouring for tongues. They were going berserk for tongues, it seems, because Paul is quite heavy in his chastisement of them. So he picks his quill and he writes to them and lashes them with his own tongue through the quill. In chapter 12, verse 10, we see that tongues are at the end of a list of gifts. This is very significant structurally. Again, I find that absolutely interesting. In chapter 14, Paul makes a sharper distinction with tongues as he makes the distinction between tongues and prophecy. He says tongues come from within as a gift. They edify the individual and without an interpretation, they only remain as a subjective edification of the individual. They come from within and are for the person that speaks it. Whereas prophecy, this is why Paul argues is greater. It comes from without. It's a word from outside the person and is not for the individual alone, but for the whole community. It's an incredible distinction to make that Paul draws out for us here. Prophecy then is for building up the community, for encouraging the community, for the consolation of the community. As a matter of observation as well, also notice the multiple questions that Paul is peppering throughout this chapter too. He wants the Corinthians to come to their own conclusions after he has given them this instruction. So Paul makes a contrast in uh, with tongues. He says... When you speak in a tongue, the spirit prays, but the mind is unfruitful. There's a really healthy biblical understanding of how the mind engages with the human heart, the spirit of things, as we engage in our Christian life. Christianity is not just subjectivity. So Paul says, my spirit might be enlivened or enlarged, but my mind is unfruitful. I find that absolutely fascinating that he says that because he goes on to say biblical faith in from verse 15 is I could pray with my spirit uh, but my mind is unfruitful I could I could sing with my spirit but my mind would be unfruitful Paul is arguing here for a really healthy uh, cohesive uh, joining together of spirit and mind not mere intellectualism but not also dumbed down uh, subjectivity either so he says I want to pray with my spirit and with my mind I want to sing with my spirit and with my mind in verse 18 Paul speaks in tongues he says more than all of you And yet he said he would rather speak five words of prophecy than 10,000 words in a tongue. This kind of sets the mark of a gulf between the ideal gift that Paul is talking about in prophecy and how it relates to the gift that is given to some in tongues. I don't know if you remember, many of us will have experienced the the, 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 the family wars of, of church life, the worship wars, also the tongues wars in some Pentecostal charismatic circles. Some say that you can't be Christian unless you speak in tongues. I hope that this has been soundly disavowed in our day. It's clearly not true. I myself do not speak in tongues. But Paul says he speaks in tongues more than all of them, so they have no right to even talk about this uh, with him in any case. He says uh, to speak in tongues uh, is uh, is to confuse an outsider. If an outsider comes in and they, and they see just only tongues, they're confused. If they come in, 
and hear prophecy, and that prophecy is, is understood, then there is repentance and confession and salvation and the genuine worship of God, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Verse 20 is the key verse of this chapter. Stop being childish regarding the gifts. Grow up in your thinking, is what Paul is saying to this Corinthian, this infantile Corinthian church. The second part of chapter 11 is rather more difficult about women staying silent in the churches, so I'll go now. 